having domestic bliss and then if something happens and they, they get called back to Starling City. So what's where all of our publicity at kind of when we meet them again? Um, well, you will see them in their couple of retrospect. Um, you see them in their... In the best they have been as a couple. But they're dealing with the fact that they no longer... I mean, Felicity's dealing with the fact that she kind of no longer has this... This... Uh, I want to say imposing, but it was timidness. It was her, her night job was running an aero team, to a certain extent. Was very, it was a very big life change for her and sort of made her open to people and maybe she doesn't have that sort of interest or purpose anymore and I think that that's what she's dealing with personally um, is what's going to fill that void and, and if she's going to be able to continue on sort of just like being happy Let's just be happy. which seems so simple but it's very dynamic what can you tell us about Felicity's arc this season involving her father or personally, professionally? I don't know much about her father. I really do hope that he comes in. I feel that she's going to start off lighter, which is going to be great because I feel that she emotionally exhausted herself in last season. Um, I feel like she took a, she got a lot taken out of her. Um, she gives a lot. She's very giving. and I don't think that she's really taking care of herself, which makes it hard to take care of other people. Um, so I think that the five months away has sort of maybe re, um, refurbished? <laughs> That's not the word I'm looking for. Has uh, regenerated that part of herself. Are we going to see more Felicity's mom? Because she's so great. I think so, yeah. I think she. I think she'll be back for a couple of episodes. I, I love them together. I like seeing mother-daughter relationships. So we got a sense that maybe Felicity and Oliver are not exactly, you know, content in their marital bliss or whatever state they're in when we find them. Are they kind of like, you know, rubbing against each other and going, I can't stand being in the same house with you anymore? Or are they kind of no, more happy? I don't think it's that. I think it's finding like what, like what they're, what they mean as a in the world as a team as a couple. Like how do you, how do you, you know, ignore the life that you had when you were running from bullets every five minutes or chasing down whether or not you were going to die. Um, and now they have these sort of, you know, more less <laughs> less dangerous things to do, like maybe go out for dinner and that sort of thing. And I think it's more finding like, are, are we happy doing this forever? Like, is this is this what it is? Like, should we take up a hobby? I mean, <laughs> like canoeing. Um, this city kind of represents a different kind of strong woman. Like, she's not out there kicking ass all the time, but she definitely holds her own. Okay. Like, um, how do you feel about, like, demonstrating a different kind of female strength on screen? Well, I think it's important. I think it's authentic to her and a lot of women out there. I find we can all be strong, and you can do it in a hundred different ways. And I really appreciate that she's authentic to herself and has stayed strong to herself and hopefully honest to herself. I do find that she, like I said, emotionally exhausted herself and maybe lost a little bit of her little bit of her strength, but that doesn't take away from her innate being, being a strong um, person, but I think, or her, her disposition, um, but I honor her for that, and I respect her for that, and I respect the women in my life who are like that, and I find that it's a really important representation for women to, to know that they can be themselves, and that they don't you know, necessarily need a suit to fight crime, or or need to be... You don't need to be the patriarchal definition of strong to be strong. That hit it. Last season we saw Ray sign over to his company to Felicity. What would you like to see come out of that? I would like to see her accept it if she wants it and not take on the responsibility if she doesn't. And for her to be able to let it go if, if it's not working, if, it's not, if she's not happy doing it. But if she really, really wants that, then I would, I would like her to dive into that and maybe not necessarily give all of her... I'm going to go outside and space. Give all of her or time to team here. Which seems like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> which would be hard to do, I think. <laughs> How is she going to feel about Malcolm Merlin being out there in charge of the league? I mean, that was one of the prices that Oliver had to pay for last season. She's not a fan of Malcolm. I'm a fan of John. Um, so I hope that they have a lot of terrifying, dangerous moments together. <laughs> um, but knowing knowing your enemy is kind of how I think she works. And she knows Malcolm. I think he's a little bit of a hot cannon. He, he's creative and he's the magician. And she's going to have to be very creative and it's going to touch a different part of her if she ever has to sort of put him in line or take him to battle. I think it's going to be a little bit treacherous if we get to that point. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you.